Flying Dissident Podcast. How many of you from iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, and you follow me on Twitter at the Brad Whitaker. I'm going to give you my NFL Week 9 spreads and predictions, but first, Game 7 of the World Series is tonight. Uh, not a great Game 6. Quite frankly, none of the games this series have been too <laughs> been that great, but uh, it's set up for an exciting Game 7, and it's an intriguing one, that's for sure, especially the way the Chicago Cubs have sort of clinged on, and, you know, they, <laughs> they don't have any bullpen. Joe Madden... Went to Aroldis Chapman yesterday in the seventh inning. He pitched the eighth inning, and he pitched part of the ninth inning. This was coming off of a 30-plus pitch performance in Game 5 two days before. And, you know, I talked about this on the podcast yesterday, about how Chapman is... He's the kind of pitcher that it, it doesn't seem to phase him whether he's coming off of one day's rest, two days rest, three days rest, or no days rest. And... You know, if Madden needs him to pitch three innings tonight, hell, if he needs him to pitch four innings tonight, he'll do it. And it's shocking to some people because they don't know they don't know what to do. Chapman, they're saying he's being overworked. Well, this is the time if you're going to overwork a pitcher, this is the time to do it. There's a time you risk overworking a pitcher, this is when to do it. And they may not even have Chapman at the end of the year. Chapman's a free agent. We keep forgetting that. But you look at his statistics, he actually gets better the more he pitches. <laughs> the more he pitches and the less rest he has, the better he performs. And Madden clearly doesn't trust his bullpen. That's why he said after Game 5, after John Lester went in Game 5 uh, and won, Joe Madden said, Lester's ready to go from the bullpen in Game 6 and Game 7. Well, they didn't need him last night. They're probably going to need him tonight. Because even though Kyle Hendricks, he pitched great uh, in his last outing. I think it was Game 4. Or Game 3, rather. Hendricks, Hendricks can't go more than 90 pitches reliably. So they're probably going to need Lester to go for a couple innings, two, three, maybe four innings. I, I don't, wouldn't be surprised if Madden pushed Lester as well. And this is something interesting I heard from uh, Tom Verducci this morning. Uh, Jake Ar Arietta pitched yesterday. He pitched a stellar performance. Uh, you wouldn't expect him to go tonight. Of course, that's happened before. Uh, pitchers have gone game six one and come back in in game seven. It happened in 2001. Kurt Schilling came in in relief, pitched two consecutive performances. Uh, it's possible that Jake Arrieta could go tonight in game seven. Not John Lackey. He would be next in the rotation. Lackey hasn't done well. I mean, Lackey's one of those pitcher that, pitchers that if he's hot, you go with him. He was great in the postseason back in 2013 with the Red Sox, but he just doesn't seem to have it right now. He's getting up there in age, too. But Jake Arrieta could go. Let's say Hendricks doesn't work out, and Lester can only go for a few innings. You know, you can't have Chapman go for, for four innings. It's possible, like I said. Chapman could go for three, possibly into a fourth inning. But... Hendricks has issues, or Lester ends up having issues, you might, you'll have to go with Jake Arrieta. Now, it's important that the Cubs don't give up many runs. Because they have one run on Corey Kluber in 12 innings. Corey Kluber starting tonight for the Cleveland Indians. And if Kluber doesn't perform well, they have Brian Shaw, Cody Allen, and of course Andrew Miller well-rested, ready to go in the bullpen. It's setting up for a great Game 7. If you, had to, if you had to put money on a team, I'd pick the Cleveland Indians. They're a better hitting team at home. Uh, I think I read they hit above 280 at home. Terry Francona is a great postseason manager. He wins, he wins Game 7s. We've seen him doing it in the, in the past. 
he can do it again. But I wouldn't be surprised. <clears throat> Joe Madden, he's been a very aggressive manager. Uh, I'm tired of this criticism that he's he's overthrowing a role to Chapman. The Cubs have no incentive to rest Chapman. You know, even bringing him into the game in, in game six, uh, the Cubs had a five-run lead, and people are saying, why are you bringing Chapman in? You're going to need him to go in game seven. Well, that's easy to say when you have a five-run lead, but not when there's runners on base and you have the meat of the order coming up for Cleveland. That's what Madden said after the game. That's why he brought Chapman in. So there'll be plenty of analysis tomorrow from Game 7 of the World Series. Very exciting. Two teams, both trying to break curses. Indians seem to have the advantage going in on paper. Their bullpen is well rested. They hit better at home. But the Cubs have the reliable arms going. Their fatigue may play a factor, but you know these Game 7s often come down to pitching. So... We'll see what happens there. But moving on to the NFL Week 9, I'm going to give the spreads heading into the week. Uh, it's Wednesday, so these are the spreads as of Wednesday. Uh, starting with the Thursday night matchup, Atlanta and Tampa Bay. I'm going to give my predictions as well. Atlanta is a three-point favorite on the road in Tampa. Uh, Atlanta's a different team on the road, and I wasn't convinced of anything after their performance last week. Uh, they managed to beat the Green Bay Packers, a team that's stumbled into Atlanta, and the Falcons are a different team at home. I wouldn't be surprised if the Buccaneers pulled this one out, at least stayed within the point spread of three. I'm picking the Bucks in that one. Moving on, Jacksonville on the road in Kansas City. The Chiefs are seven and a half point favorites. I have them as 10 point favorites. Chiefs should be able to cover that, no problem. Jacksonville head coach Gus Bradley. Look, he's it's clear he's not going to keep his job. Uh, the Most in the league seem to think he's a nice guy. That seems to be the perception about Gus Bradley. He'll make a fine assistant somewhere else next year, maybe in a you know a pl more players-friendly organization, although Jacksonville has been plenty players-friendly, but they've never been able to do anything with the talent that they've had. So, you know, I'm not going to rely on Bradley's Jaguars going into Kansas City and being within seven and a, half, and a half points at Arrowhead. No way. Detroit on the road in Minnesota. The Vikings, people are still convinced on the Vikings. They're six and a half point favorites, uh, even though they lost to Chicago and they lost to Philadelphia the week before. Uh, but you shouldn't be convinced on Minnesota right now. Two consecutive losses. They lost tackles Matt Khalil and Andre Smith, and that's had an impact. Sam Bradford is facing pressure that he didn't have. And they haven't been able to fill that hole at running back since Adrian Peterson left. Nor Turner resigned today. I'm taking the Detroit Lions, even though the Vikings are six-point favorites. You know, these last two games for Minnesota shows how much of a difference a good offensive line makes in today's NFL. It's everything now. Two, three years ago, it wasn't. All right, because teams started to develop more athletic linemen and defensive tackles, and eventually that caught up to the offensive linemen. Offensive linemen make a difference, and you need strong coaching if you're going to make those adjustments. And, you know, Norv Turner clearly didn't fit into that organization, so he resigned. I don't have any confidence in Minnesota, but maybe they have a chip on their shoulder. Who knows? But I'm picking the Detroit Lions in that one. Philadelphia on the road. They're the underdog, believe it or not, after a close overtime loss in Dallas. Mo most people think, are convinced that the Dallas Cowboys are the second best team in the league at this point. Uh, so it's surprising that Philly's a two and a half point under the underdog, even though they're on the road. But they are going against the New York Giants coming off of a bye. You know, Vegas loves teams coming off of byes, especially when they're at home. But, you know, Philadelphia still looked impressive. I... That defense is going to put a lot of pressure on Eli Manning, and Carson Wentz looks like a veteran quarterback already. I'm picking the Eagles. Uh, it's going to be a close one, but I'm picking the Eagles. Speaking of the Cowboys, they're on the road in Cleveland, seven and a half point favorites. Uh, this could be a trap game. Cowboys should win no problem, but you know the Browns are 0 and 8. I understand they haven't won a single game all season. But they've lost a lot of close games. Go back and look at their schedule. A lot of close games. They lost another close one last week to the New York Jets. Uh, I'm picking the Cowboys, but I am 
I think the score will be within a touchdown. You know, uh, I have no reason to... Th there's no reason the Cowboys shouldn't win that game by 21 points, but Cleveland is a solid, winless football team, if that makes any sense. The New York Jets are visiting the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins are three and a half point favorites. Uh, I'm not taking the points, uh, but I am picking the Dolphins. I expect a close game. You never know what you're gonna get with that Dolphins team. Jets, not a great team on the road. They barely won in Cleveland last week. Uh, Miami's a tough, tough place to play. Even the best teams lose there. Uh, I'm picking the Dolphins, but again, not picking the points. Baltimore, believe it or not, is a two-point favorite at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, we still don't know who's, who is starting at quarterback, so maybe that's that's uh, that will change if ben, Big Ben is able to go out there. Pittsburgh is coming off of a bye week, but regardless, I'm still picking the Steelers. Landry Jones is not that bad of a quarterback, and the offense still should be able to put up points. Maybe not as many as if Roethlisberger were out there, but, you know, even the Pittsburgh defense, the Pittsburgh defense, I think, is capable of stopping Baltimore's ancient offense. That is an old offense. They're not getting any younger. I expect Pittsburgh to be able to win that football game. New Orleans on the road in San Francisco. This is a risky bet. New Orleans are a three and a half point favorite, uh, but just like the Atlanta Falcons, they are a different team on the road than they are at home. And New Orleans is New Orleans is basically the Pittsburgh Steelers of the NFC. They have an incredible offense, not much of a defense. I expect the Niners to potentially pull off an upset or at least keep it close. Uh, so be sure to watch that New Orleans Niners matchup. That could be a good one. Carolina on the road against the LA Rams. Uh, they're coming off a win at home against Arizona. They had a much needed bye week. Can they do it again on the road? Uh, I think Cam Newton is going to face some pressure that he didn't have last week against Arizona. Uh, the environment's going to be different. He's on the road. He's in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm picking the Rams in this one. Uh, maybe, you know, the offensive line looked better last week. But again, the Rams' pass rush could be difficult for Newton. We'll see how he handles that. If the Panthers can come into LA and, and steal a win, things are looking up for them. Maybe they will have turned things around, but uh, I'm not confident in them just yet. Indianapolis visiting Green Bay. Green Bay seven point favorites in that one. Uh, I'm not expecting the Colts to stay consistent. You know, Andrew Luck, he needs to be protected out there, uh, but he's running more. I mean, he's running the football way more these last few weeks, and he needs to protect himself. And, uh, you know, I thought early in the year he was sliding more. He looked a little better. He's a great quarterback, but the Colts just don't seem to have the tools for him to win. Uh, you know, it, it, this is a tough bet because seven points is awful generous for a Green Bay team that's stumbling, so I wouldn't put my money on that game. Tennessee and San Diego Chargers are five-point favorites. Uh, San Diego Chargers are, without a doubt, the greatest 3-5 and five football team of all time, just like the Cleveland Browns are the greatest 0-8 football team of all time. This is a weird season. This is a very strange football year. Uh, I expect San Diego to bounce back from their loss last week in Denver. They didn't look horrible. Uh, Phillip Rivers, you know, he does a lot with a little. He's an underrated quarterback. Uh, that defense gets by. Uh, you know, I like what I'm seeing from Tennessee. I like how they're they're adding Derrick Henry more and more into that offense. But on the road in San Diego, again, Chargers are in a tough division, AFC West, best three and five team of all time. I'm picking them to cover the points. Denver is an underdog this week, believe it or not. They're on the road in Oakland against the six and two Raiders. Uh, I'm picking the Denver Broncos. I look, I love watching the Oakland Raiders. They're a lot of fun. Uh, but they do have some issues. They, I know they're a 6-2 and two team. Derek Carr looks incredible. He looks like the next great veteran quarterback in the NFL. He really does. But the Raiders have had a weak schedule. Derek Carr has had a fairly decent offensive line this season. And that defense has underperformed. And they can't stay disciplined out there. They had a record 23 penalties last week. The Oakland Raiders did. 23 penalties. No NFL team has ever had that many in a game. Now, I think the refs were, were making ticky-tack calls out there, uh, to use an NBA reference, but, 
you know, the Oakland Raiders have beat up on a lot of really bad teams, and not only have, it's not just that, they haven't, they've been in a lot of close games against bad teams. So, yes, they're 6-2. and two. I think they're gonna, going to have a taste of reality this weekend with Denver on the road. Simeon's playing well. Derek Carr is going to face pressure he hasn't seen all season. I'm taking Denver. Right now, they're the underdog. Oakland is a one-point favorite. I'm taking Denver by three. Buffalo, Monday Night Football in Seattle. Seahawks, seven-point favorites. I think that's awful generous. Uh, I'm not taking the points. Seattle should be able to bounce back at home, but don't expect them to win by a touchdown after tying Arizona 6-6 six to six and losing in New Orleans. Russell Wilson is clearly hurt. He's going to be playing through injury the rest of the season. Seattle is a tough team that's going to get by, and I think their defense will come together. They came together more and more as last season progressed, but... You know, Russell Wilson needs to get healthy, and he's playing on a bad ankle and a bad knee every week. I don't expect Seattle to win by seven, but then again, you never know with Rex Ryan. He could go into Seattle and have a clunker and lose by 30 points, or he could win by 21 and shut out the Seahawks. You never know with his team. So that's it for uh, today's podcast. Be sure to watch Game 7 of the World Series tonight. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about that. And 